Hi, uh, I'm Luke and this is Tim and we're going to be talking about the piezoelectric effect. Now the piezoelectric effect discovered by Jacques and Pierre Curie in 1880 is the generation of a voltage across certain materials when mechanical stress is applied to those materials. Now the opposite is also true. When you apply a voltage to the crystal you will also witness mechanical stresses and this can be perceived uh, as usually as sound uh, by humans and we'll show you this later when we apply it but now let's look at the microscopic level. So now we'll take a look at what's going on on the microscopic level. So here we have our quartz crystal made up of silicon and oxygen and this is in its current relaxed state meaning that the overall charge on it is neutral because all of the positive charges are cancelled out by the negative charges. However, when we apply our force we'll end up in a stress state. Now to get this shape we have to apply a force here and here. So the thing about this is basically squeezing our quartz crystal. Now what we have done is we've aligned our charges in such a way that we can actually generate overall charges on the material with a positive charge at the top and a negative charge at the bottom. Now what this does is it generates a voltage across this material in this direction. Now this isn't the only way we can actually create a voltage. We can also create a voltage by applying forces in other ways. So take this one for example where as opposed to pushing it together we stretch our material. Now when this is done we generate a negative charge at the top and a positive charge at the bottom resulting in the voltage traveling the opposite way. Now that we understand what's kind of going on in the microscopic level we can show you what happens in real life applications such as a piezo material found in smoke detectors. So right now we have our piezo material hooked up to a multimeter reading voltage and what we can demonstrate now is that by applying a pressure, i.e. flicking this material, we can generate a voltage picked up by our multimeter. So so long as I keep flicking, a voltage will keep being produced. Our setup is the multimeter, um, the function generator, and the piezo which we have soldered two wires too. So, attach the function generator, attach the multimeter, and just turn on the function generator, starting at one hertz. You probably can't hear it right now, but I hear a tick like at that speed. So if we ramp up the hertz a little bit, the ticking gets faster. So right now, not going too high, staying at like five hertz. But let's go to a kilohertz and see what happens. So you should be able to hear that and moving it up. 1.1 kilohertz, 3, 4, 5, and up. And this is all at 9, um, nine volts. We took the piece of, from the case that amplifies the sound, and we just wanted to de demonstrate how much of an effect it has. So normally this is the sound that comes out, if you can hear that. Um, but now we'll put that back, the amplification thing all back on and you can tell it's ten times louder. Now that we're done playing with the piezo material, let's move to applications. So one application is found in candle lighters where as you pull the trigger mechanism, you flick a piezo material and generate a very, very high voltage across it. Now this voltage ends up coming to a gap where it can't cross, so instead a spark is sent through the gap and ignites a very flammable uh, gas. Now this gas, when it ignites, allows you to light your candles. 
Another application is in watches, both analog and digital, in which the quartz crystals keep t the pre very precise time of the hands due to its oscillations. And finally, in ultrasounds, a piezo material is vibrated very, very quickly, producing sound at a much higher frequency than humans can hear. And as this sound is sent out and brought back in, a digital instrument can read these signals and interpret an image from them.